These inmates say their cell is so overcrowded it's inhumane. They desperately shout their complaints into the camera. No reporter has ever visited this prison in the Brazilian municipality of Itaúna, a two-hour flight from Rio de Janeiro. Prison warden Wesley Santos takes us in with him. He leaves his service weapon outside. There's too great a risk that an inmate might steal it and take him hostage. In here, we meet people forgotten by Brazilian society. Many have been imprisoned without trial, jammed together in the sweltering heat. The cells here were designed to hold eight or nine inmates. Right now, there are 28 per cell. Hammocks made of shreds of fabric serve as improvised beds. And everyone has something to say. This man says the prisoners are not only stressed out, they're also left on their own. That leaves them with plenty of time to think up new crimes. Another says they're willing to serve their terms and pay for their crimes, but they want dignity. Santos tells him he knows that, but he's powerless to do anything about it. A new penitentiary building has been in the planning for years, but no funding has come through. And the number of inmates in Brazil has doubled in the past few years. The system is on the verge of collapse. Five out of six inmates in state prison become repeat offenders. So Santos is glad there's an alternative, at least for a few of the prisoners. He tells this one, Enio Borges, to pack his things, and he gets a round of applause. Borges is a crack dealer, and after a year of waiting, he's allowed to leave the overcrowded cell. Together with three other inmates, he's being taken to a private prison with an alternative concept that's based on rehabilitation. The reoffending rate is said to be much lower there. We want to find out how it works. We're on our way to an APAC prison run by the Association for the Protection and Assistance of the Convicted. It's an NGO founded by donations and government aid. There are no armed guards at the gate, just law student Tiago Oliveira, who works as the equivalent of a supervisor here. First, he orders new clothes, colorful Bermuda shorts instead of uniform red. Twenty-eight-year-old Marco Tulio explains the system to the new inmates. He's a prisoner himself and chairman of the Prisoners' Council. That's a self-governing body that ensures the strict rules that will define their stay here are obeyed. If you lie, even to protect another prisoner, you'll be harshly punished. You're expected to actively prevent fellow inmates from using drugs. The clear message is that anyone who breaks the rules will go back to the state prison. But those who cooperate are rewarded, with telephone time, for example, or more responsibility. The new inmates get their own beds and open cell doors. Marco Tulio tells us that on arriving in ordinary prisons in Brazil, they'd be subject to physical violence and insults. The new inmates will see how people in here change completely, from their personalities to their ideas. He tells us that the strict rules and daily work helped him the most, giving him both structure and a bit of pocket money. At the age of 28, he's already spent 12 years in detention for dealing in cannabis and making numerous attempts to escape. At first, he couldn't believe that there weren't any guards in the APAC prison. Selected prisoners have keys for the cells and the outer gates. Despite that, there have been no escape attempts for years. A 
Attending the Saturday morning church service is compulsory in the APAC prison. Inmates are required to reflect on their lives, both here and in sessions with psychologists. I can't predict that everything will go well in life outside or that I'll be really lucky. We always have difficulties, but now at least I won't do anything wrong again. It all depends on me. One of Marco Tullio's duties on the prisoner's council is to punish infringements of the rules. A pair of shorts is missing, so he calls everyone together. Today is supposed to be a free day, but if this continues, we'll have to lock the cells. A pair of shorts has disappeared from cell 3. If it isn't returned, there'll be no TV, no games, and no football. No one wants that. There are mutual recriminations and rumors. Prisoners found guilty of theft could be tossed out of the facility, but the culprit is not found. As always, when the inmates can't find a solution themselves, Tulio informs supervisor Tiago Oliveira. He decides that cell 3, where the shorts disappeared, will be locked up because the inmates have neglected their duties. It's not easy for us to stick to all these rules, not even for me. We have to justify ourselves for every little thing. And we have to deal with our own mistakes time and again. Sunday is visiting day. Families wait outside the prison, while the inmates get ready to meet them inside. Jonatas Lima is getting a quick haircut. The 19-year-old was transferred here from a state prison a month ago. He was convicted of attempted murder in a gang shooting, in self-defense, he says. Now he's helping prepare the visitor's room in the inner courtyard. With less than an hour to go, he can hardly wait. At the door are Janata's mother, grandmother, and three sisters. In the APAC prison, families are expressly welcome. While Janata was in the state prison, his grandmother didn't see him at all. And he's especially close to her. He shows her around almost proudly. His mother says she worries less now that he's here. Visits from his family are also an incentive for Jonata not to commit any infractions in the APAC prison. My grandmother told me today she's happy that I want to change now. I could really see how glad she was. Now she has this broad smile on her face when she looks at me. And she's not as worried. That comforts me a lot. We wonder why there aren't more APAC prisons. Judge Paulo Carvajo is visiting. For years, he's been campaigning for the system to be extended, for donations and for state support. There are now 40 of these alternative prisons here in the state of Minas Gerais. But other Brazilian states have not followed suit. You build an ordinary prison, open it, and transfer the inmates on the same day. That's simple. Not the APAC system. There you first have to explain to the communities, deal with the authorities, and prepare the inmates. That's a difficult process. But it's worth it. He tells us that when the prison is up and running, it costs only half as much per inmate. 
It's hard to admit, but unfortunately, Brazilian prisons are reserved for people who were poor, dependent, or black. If 60% of the inmates came from the prosperous middle class, our entire system would have changed long ago. It's 5 o'clock the next morning in the open prison, the last stage of the APAC system. We meet Marcio dos Santos, a convicted murderer. After six years of good behavior, he was allowed on to day release. Like many, the 58-year-old has caught up on his school diploma. Nine years before his release, he now works outside the prison as a truck driver. The APAC helped him find a job. It's really emotionally liberating to get out of here and go to work. Even though he does have prospects for the future, Dos Santos is not blocking out the past. Time and again, he thinks back to the day that he shot his wife in a fit of jealousy. His son has rejected him since then. I sense this incredible burden, even though I regularly go to confession and prayers in the APAC prison. Knowing I've taken a life isn't easy to bear. The most important thing to me now is not to make any more mistakes. The chances of doing that are good for him and the others here. Only one in ten people who serve their terms in APAC prisons re-offend. <laughs> 